Hi, welcome to another episode of the Air Zoo's Launchpad Learning. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time on the Air Zoo's Sopwith Camel. <music> to get an idea of how important this aircraft was in World War I, we need to go back a little bit into early 1917. There is no doubt that the Royal Flying Corps was struggling against superior German fighters on the Western Front. General Hugh Trenchard, in charge of the Royal Flying Corps in France, had this to say, you expect me to fight this year's battles in 1917 with the same machines I fought it with last year. We will be hopelessly outclassed. And his words couldn't have been more prophetic because in April of 1917, the British would suffer 316 losses of air crew. This was a devastating number of men that were lost. They could not continue to have these losses. But in the middle of May 1917, a ray of hope would come forth. And that ray of hope was the Sopwith Camel. Because the early Sopwith Camels that began to arrive on the Western Front with the Royal Naval Air Squadrons, and then in June of 1917 with Royal Flying Corps Squadrons, really began to make a difference. And there's a number of reasons for this. The first reason is, is that the aircraft is armed with two synchronized forward firing machine guns. Those are .303 Vickers belt-fed machine guns. This is the first British production fighter to have two machine guns forward firing. Up to that point, their aircraft had one machine gun German aircraft, almost all of them had two machine guns. This began to bring some parity in terms of firepower. Secondly, the aircraft was very maneuverable, almost legendary. Most pilots who flew it would comment on how maneuverable, how nimble the aircraft was in the air. Thirdly, its top speed was about 112 miles an hour, which meant that while it wasn't the fastest pursuit of fighter aircraft in World War I, it certainly was much better than the types of aircraft the Royal Flying Corps had been using up to that point. And fourth, it was available. As time went on, as the weeks and months went on, more and more camels would be produced. Indeed, by the end of the war, over 5,695 camels would be produced by Sopwith and seven subcontractors. Camels would be used on the Western Front, the Italian Front, and in the Middle East. And by the end of the war, camel pilots would rack up an impressive 1,543 aerial victories, more than any other pursuit aircraft in World War I, earning the camel the nickname, the King of Combat. Camels would be used all the way through the end of the war in November of 1918. However, it must be admitted that they were starting to show some age after being in combat for well over a year but there's no doubt the impact they had in World War I was very significant. <laughs> 